Hey y'all, I'm gonna be reacting to I Caught Soup Planet episode 4. I'll be watching it from YouTube's website that's on Akatsuki Planet's channel and apparently the subtitles were made by Mesa Shite. Thank you very much. Their video currently has 464 likes and 5 dislikes so I'll add an extra like so that they have an 465 likes and I will be starting my reaction in 1, 0, go! Oh, and while they do mention all this, let me just say I'll leave the link to the episode in the description box. Um, I don't think we need Mal's name, no, to be mentioned every episode, though, when it comes to recaps, but I guess it is, since it's only a small bit in the episode, I guess it's fine for the most part. As long as they don't make it seem like they're spitting feeding the information into the audience to an excess extent at the very least. Oh boy. Oh yeah, true, both the recent loss. She's uh, much more grounded. Yeah. I hope they don't take that as a downside to Anna. I can see why they do be creeped out. It's like, geez, how much time do you spend looking at these idols stuff? I can see why one of the friends would be taken aback a bit. No, she is doing a good job as Hana. It's just that. She needs to practice a bit more, that's all she needs. No, I think when it comes to Mao, she just needs to act more like herself. And eventually people will get used to like those minor changes of Hana. Because the lady did say that eventually they are going to reveal Mao's identity as Hana in due time. Hmm. Yo, those three look like they're about to have a heart attack. Damn. You're literally just about to be overbowled with gifts. Oh. Wait, did the one just paint her? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, hey, I mean, it's cute in its own way, but damn. I'm actually shocked. I was like, yo, someone need to be taking some chill pills in the audience there. Jeez. But hey, you know what? All this aside, that's part of the reason why I like this series. If it wasn't campy, I wouldn't like it as much. But alright, this is looking good. This is feeling like it might actually end up being one of the better Akatsuki Planet episodes in the series. And I completely welcome that. Oh yeah. If you're wondering what time it is in my time zone, it's actually like two hours past midnight. In case you're wondering. But anyways, enough about that. Just something about the Akatsuki Planet. At least when it comes to its opening. It gives me a lot of energy looking at it. Just seeing all the fun, positive, happy vibes. It's actually nice to get to see that Sala is going to have her own, um... Her own avatar too, just looking at the opening there. 
Yamato Nari Shiko Rock version. Quite the extreme episode title there, if you ask me. Biggest question, how should you find out her identity, though? <laughs> what a show, I like thee, though. I like you. Oh, okay. I thought for a second she actually stalked her girl and was able to figure it out through that way. That would have been fucking creepy if that ended up being the case. Hmm. When they have their AI reactions, I kind of... I think uh, both Mao and Shuri's actress could have moved at least a bit more of their faces a bit more for it to be more realistic. Just for a little bit off and then like, yeah, you know? Hmm. Hey, you know, that's a, I, that's a good point, considering the fact that Niles was more worried about trying to act like a Hana would act instead of trying to act like how she would normally act. The run, the money there. I actually like that we see her gracefulness and her multi-talented capabilities, too. I actually dig this. Damn, what a badass. Hell yeah, I have a feeling she might even end up going up against Kyoko too, considering how things are stacking up in the episode itself. I just love how she's a fucking tease with the way she's at Confidently smiling like that? Yo! Hmm. Yeah, she didn't got her excuse came on lockdown. Okay, that rule is fucking bullshit. Whoever thought of that rule is a dumbass when it comes to the three sneeze rule. They just still get rid of it, Thera. Aww. Yeah? You know, she's right. You know, this is an argument of don't try to fix what isn't broken. It is also bad to stay too stagnant without any sense of in innovation. So I can see where Kyoko is coming from. So I like that. At least with Kyoko, when it comes to Kyoko, she's got an assertive personality and a go-getting personality. Hmm. Normally, I think it'd be, wait, is that a gunshot sound? But I don't think this series, oh.
Wait, there's a certificate. Oh, I thought for a second, like, there's a certification for that at school? I'd be like, wait, what? But then she was teasing again. I was like, oh, okay. Got of it. She had me there. She had me there. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm probably like, looking at one. She already had that long to figure it out concerning she did Keith's little wink. I wonder if it's gonna be the place where she practices her dances. Oh. That's gonna be my guess. Huh. I do like the gentle music playing in the background though. It's got a nice softening touch to it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, looks pretty dang styling if you ask me. You know, I was about to make a hookah joke there when I saw that pot. About to. And the fancy sophisticated music with the classical feel definitely does fit Kyoko to a T. Was like the harp so necessary? No, jeez. Oh. Yo, what a badass. And I wouldn't blame her one bit. Plus she gets to keep her privacy too. I'd say it's a win-win. There's no way she's gonna say no to that. And I'm assuming it's going to lead into Hana facing off against Kyoko. And you know, the CGI model for Rikatsuku uh, Mavatar doesn't look that bad actually. Well, the voice sounds completely different from Kyoko's um, live action version. <laughs> that doesn't like your A voice. That was just perfection right there. And I do love how you always see her constantly teasing the people. It puts a smile to my face. I always love the troll-like characters in animations, or even in movies, too. Oh! I mean, thankfully, it ain't the actual, because that'd be a lot of sugar. I mean, Coca-Cola's have like 51 grams of sugar if you drink it. Doesn't that kill the whole purpose of drinking soda though in like a teapot? That's like the perfectly good waste of a glass bottle if you ask me. <laughs> Had a feeling they were gonna face each other. They wouldn't have introduced her for nothing if that wasn't gonna end up being the case. Oh, 
Ah. Oh. I like how forceful she is too. Whoa! I love how they immediately bat for their girl instantly like that. I don't think I should, they should, should let it get to her though. Yeah, exactly. She should be her own person. I like the message that someone could take watching this where you shouldn't try to conform yourself to be something you're not. You should always try to be yourself without compromising it one bit. In most scenarios, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. That explains why Kyoko is out, at least from what we've seen in this episode so far, she always has massive amounts of self-confidence. Oh. It is. Yeah. I mean, she's adapted the Hana persona, so she might as well just go with it completely. I mean, hey, it's looking like people are actually going to be approving of Hana more now that she's becoming more relatable to the common folk there. I mean, it's only fair that they both go all out against each other. Oh, that's fucking cute! Aww. <laughs> I wonder if it's gonna be restricted stage this time, or if it's gonna be a um, normal one where they can use two dresses during the event. That's what I'm wondering. Okay, it's definitely unrestricted then. Going by, I always see Smart QB. Yeah, I always love seeing Smart QB. Oh, it's so adorable. I just wish Smart QB had more lines because it's so fucking cute. I was up how it looks like she's already a to like ice skip whenever she does that pose. Hmm. Honestly, well, now that I'm the design that she's rocking, she'd probably fit in all rock band anime too with the design of beat anyway. Oh, yeah, the cute little thing is on him swan. Oh, look at that girl. I should like how they implement some of the things we saw in episode one in like a small ways, and they have a bigger effect of coming back into the narrative later on. Not bad. Hmm. Alright, this one's got some tropical vibes, too. And I like it, at least it's different from the visual effects of the previous three episodes. Finally! Not that I hated the visual effects in the first three episodes, they're great. But I actually love some variety changes sometimes. 
I actually like that where even if life throws curveballs at you, as long as you keep a smile in most scenarios, things aren't going to be that bad. At least, that's the sort of nuances I'm seeing from this specific song. And I also like that too. With the positivity of you can share your deepest things inside of you with someone that you truly know well, too. I think it's optimistic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I fucking love this song. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I fucking love this. Body down. I think Beat's gonna win this. I feel like she had a bigger presence. Go again. Whoa, 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 yeah. No, I think Beat's taking this because I think she had more presence in this song than, than Hana does. I could be absolutely wrong, but... I just feel like she's earned the win. In this, at least in this specific episode. Nothing gets on her though. I actually don't blame the crowd for going on, but I think Beat got this in the back because she had a better performance. Like, her voice was all much more prominent and she had a much more bigger, yeah. This was Kyoko's episode. There's just no way Hana was going to win, considering that Kyoko's got more experience. A lot more self-confidence in herself. And while, yes, Mao has realized that you should be yourself, Beat's been knowing that for a longer amount of time. I was actually a cute little scene, though. How even though she lost, you can see how much of a good sport she is. I just realized, but damn, Kyoko's, she is tall. Jeez. And you know what's the matter the most? Even though she lost, in a way, it's nice to get to see Mao gain the moral victory. Oh, this is looking adorable, that clap thing. Especially with like the little wink and all that. Oh, it's over. Alright, I've had to rate this episode on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being abysmal, 5 being average, and 10 being exceptional. I'm definitely going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. I thought it was above average because I actually thought the episode was uh, nice in a way. I mean, I think all the episodes are nice, but I think this one especially so because for a 1, something that really makes this one stand out is the fact that when it comes to this episode it finally deals with the universal theme of whether you should do things according to how how you act or doing things based on the expectations of other people and I like how I had the message of nah you should be doing things based on how you would want to do things yourself and not based off the desires of other people. And that's something I really, really dig. It has a nice message. And also I thought Kyoko was charismatic, hilarious, funny, kind. Doing a solid of actually helping teach Mao that she should be herself. And I thought it had a nice positive message in the episode. That's why I thought the script was good for the most part. How to look a lot of humor. Oh. It actually was a cute and badass dress, I ain't gonna lie. I'm actually in agreement. I always love that cute little pose of like, yay, mirror in. I always love doing that. Oh, I'm actually pumped up for the next one. Looking good. I was like when they were saying, eh? Alright, can't wait to react to the next one. Well, 
Anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I thought it was, out of all of them, I thought it was the best episode in the series so far. Well, anyways, y'all, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the video, share it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later if you come back for more. Bye-bye, everyone.